looking for a girlfriend. No astrology believers, no vegans, no feminists, no TikTok users, no art students, no liberals, must listen to death metal, must enjoy anime, must enjoy Rick and Morty, only the most intellectual of entertainment for me, and preferably a Redditor, optional. And Miss Kitzer comments, empty. The inbox is empty. If you watch closely, you may glimpse a tumbleweed rolling by in there. Hello, Redditors of the Internet, Nobles you not here, and welcome to our slash nice guys part 62. Let's get started. For this next one for McHugh, everyone, no need to fight. I said I'm a nice guy. Damn females, message me already. I think I see the same tumbleweed that was rolling through the other guy's DMs. For this next one, we've got your average everyday nice guy. He really got me good. Nice guy starts us off. Hey, sorry about that. I was an a-hole, but it was a tough situation for me. I'm sorry for dragging you into it. I should have listened to you, and I'm super sorry for bringing up your past. I was a D, and you don't deserve any of that. Thank you for the apology. Oh wow, so he actually apologized, but wait a minute, we're not done. I hope you're doing well, and to be honest, I miss your company. I'm sorry I effed it up. Yes I am, thanks. Hope you are too. I'm in a relationship now, so I do appreciate the apology, but we should continue on with our lives. And the nice guy replies, I'm getting married, hon. I'm not trying to hook up again. I just felt bad. I miss your company, but not in that sense. I'm glad you found someone. Not to be an a-hole, you're a great person, but I never wanted anything long-term with you. I'm happy for you. OP replies, lol, ditto. Good luck in your marriage. That's awesome. Thank you for the well wishes. Happy for you, too. I'm not interested in talking anymore, though, so I wish you the best. And nice guy replies, okie dokie. Bye, kiddo. You were never interesting to begin with. Good D-sucker, though. You should capitalize on that. It's about all you got going for you, winky face. Wow, well, um, there's the nice guy coming out right at the end. And Hun, too. I wonder if he's about to pitch me an MLM. For this next one, he added me just to tell me this. I haven't tried to date for a long time, so I don't even know who he is. Your mom. Great opening there. You were in my contacts, and I don't know you, but just wanted to thank you for helping me realize how much better off I am without you, or any other random I've met from some online dating app somewhere, lol. And I know you're probably not mature enough to read this and understand, and that's probably why I stopped talking to you. Oh, and if you're wondering about the random your mom, it's because the OP asked who he was. So yeah, real mature response there. He is handsome, therefore I love him. This explains so many things, sadly. It's about a dog. And you can see the texts. Hey babe, I met a guy today. He was really handsome and I think I'm in love with him. His name is Roger. Show me the dog. And there's the dog. Oh, too cute. In a battle of nice guys versus good boys, good boys win every time. For this next one, I'm tired of this app, I swear to god. Hi, how are you? Nice pick. Not interested, thanks though. Was just being nice, but okay then. I was being nice too? I didn't want to just ghost you, so I said I wasn't interested in thanks? What am I supposed to say, LMAO? I don't know, nor do I freaking care. Thanks, go die though, LMFAO. All right, lol, have a good day. F you. And uh, she just replies with more hearts. And then he again replies, suck on one and die. Wow. For this next one, any submissive and traditionalistic conspiracy realists out there found your man about a chivalrous, straight-talking, strong-minded, rebellious, red-pilled, industrious, and family-oriented Asatruar. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but I think it has to do with neo-paganism. Seeking a virtuous, loyal, truthful, feminine, affectionate, submissive, traditionalistic, and family-oriented lady to settle down with. Hit me up, alpha traditionalist, a satruar, again, I'm not sure about the pronunciation there, metalhead, dark humored, bookworm, conspiracy realist, because, you know, they're not theorists anymore. They think what they know is 100% true nowadays, I guess. Outdoorsy, anti modernist, horror sci fi fan, no vaccinated sheeple, and beta modernists. Ah, yes, beta modernists, because only cavemen can be true alpha males. 
For this next one, we've got ourselves a creepy nice guy. If I make the effort to find your address and personally deliver a $40 bouquet, that spelling though, of flowers and personalized chocolate with your name on it, which might I add cost me nearly $20 in shipping, then don't you freaking dare tell me that it's weird and tell me to go away. What the actual hell is wrong with women? They constantly ask to be treated nicely and have big romantic gestures, but when someone actually does this, they complain. LOL. F this. And distorted noise comments now. I'm not a woman, but hear me out here. I think when they say they want big romantic gestures, they mean from their significant others, not random dudes they don't know. You think? For this next one, my friend got sent this when she didn't want to show a guy her whole face and he said this to her. Also, she don't got Reddit, so I'm posting this instead because it was too funny to pass up. I just asked to see your face, but whatever, you can go F yourself, ungrateful frickin'. I hope you get- oh god, okay, okay, this is going far. You'll never find someone that loves you because you're just an ungrateful. This next one looked at least 20 to 25. Too bad you're just 15, replies with question marks. You look older than 15. Okay, and that's weird as hell to say. Not really, never heard of it from someone else before. That's weird to say to a child as a freaking adult. A child, lol, I see, you're a crybaby. Well, I'll just leave. Yes, 15 is a child. Was looking at the top of all time on the sub and found these two right next to each other. All nice guys should have this warning. Not all the people who are nice to you have good intentions. Yeah, as we've seen from 62 parts of r slash nice guys, this rings pretty true. And the post next to it says, send help. I'm nice to you. Ah uh, yes, some good old fashioned juxtaposition here. Moving on. For this next one, I too get turned on when I get hit by a bus. What if we started over and I act like a complete careless F-boy, would that work? Probably knowing Basic B's LMAO. Then again, you've probably hooked up with five guys since yesterday, and I don't mean the fast food chain, so your little self has no idea who this is. Wash your bucket, is this some kind of talk working? Because being my genuine nice self didn't so. Probably. Get hit by a bus. Getting turned on now? Probably. And I have no idea why this is marked as never claims to be nice. Because he did say his genuine nice self, but something tells me his niceness isn't all that genuine. This next one woke up to this in my DM. I never spoke to this man in my life. In fact, I never even downloaded the Tinder app at all. You are not okay because your main source of self-esteem is the approval of others. You probably don't even remember. And even if you did, you don't know who I am since both my profile picture and my nickname don't give off my identity. But we chatted a little bit on Tinder a couple years ago, just before I met my present girlfriend and deleted the app. However, from that moment on, I've been looking at your profile from time to time here and on Facebook. I'm not gonna lie, I do keep an eye on your social media despite me being in a relationship because you are stunning, weird, and broken. And I'm the younger son of two divorced psychotherapists who happens to be blessed with an off-the-charts IQ. My psychological profile is attracted to weird and broken people like you because I like to feel helpful, and I know I can help. I can read people better than they understand themselves, and for that, people usually don't like me. Weird and broken to me are like two compliments. Weird people can be weird for a plethora of reasons, but weird and broken is something much easier to be understood. In your case, for the following reasons. You are smart enough to see that life doesn't have any higher purpose other than to be enjoyed, and you are sensitive enough to feel the pain every time that the world tries to convince you otherwise. You clearly prefer and can and walk the paths of life that you know are the most enjoyable. Thus, you're weird, but you aren't strong enough to walk those paths without the approval of the people you love, and that's where you get broken. My best guess is that your family is caring and loving, but can't sincerely approve your life, whatever this may mean, and your friends envy your sharpness and your lightness, and that's where it gets tricky. I bet females can't stand being so obviously threatened by your magnificent aura, 
and males just want to bone you, ending up complimenting you and desperately trying to tell you what they think you want to hear. Result, you have scarce, if any, sincere and meaningful human interactions. I feel sorry for you, and I'd sincerely like for us to become friends. I can promise you I won't hit on you because I'm happily in love, and more importantly, I will always be real with you because I'm in the spectrum. Autistic, therefore, I'm biologically incapacitated to be less than annoyingly transparent. If I happen to be right, and if you're interested in my offer, I'm here. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. In any case, never forget that pain can be a blessing. It can show you the way to freedom, paradoxically to free yourself from pain and to grow. The only way is to listen what pain is trying to tell you. Pain comes from holding on. Holding on to what's easy, known or loved, even if it's not the best option. By understanding this simple truth, you can free yourself from what holds you down. Best wishes from a once broken, now free weirdo. Wait a minute, may I remind you that all this was sent without a single reply from the OP, and never having spoken to this man in her entire life. This is just some creepy stuff right here, so let's just move on. For this next one, posted this yesterday in creepy PMs and was told it fit here too. Dude needs to learn how to be human. Are you married? Engaged. I want you so bad, I'd have you pinned against a wall before sliding my hands down to your butt and grabbing harshly at your cheeks. Staring at you with my green eyes, I'll make you feel my hardness. Dude, no! Why? Because I don't know you and you're creepy as hell. Let's get to know each other. F no. Bye. For this next one, we've got ourselves a hand-drawn nice guy with weirdly small neck losing a girl to a fiscally irresponsible Chad who allows his cash to spill recklessly from his pockets. Thoughts and prayers all around for the nice guy. Don't complain of good men not existing. You chose your type. Come here, B. Bring your fine ass this way. Versus the nice guy who said, Oh, beautiful soul, how I admire your every being. Thoughts and prayers. And for this next one, I hope you're close to the shower because I needed a shower after reading this one. I, 31-year-old male, bought used panties for my brother's girlfriend and I don't regret it. 31-year-old male, ladies and gentlemen. Recently, I went to a family dinner so that my brother, Matthew, 26 male, could introduce us to his new girlfriend, Paige, 23-year-old female. For context, Matthew is a very masculine, dumb jock type. I honestly couldn't say how he gets the women he does. He doesn't deserve them. I admit, I've always been jealous of Matthew, even though he's the younger brother, because he's always gotten whatever he wants. Paige, on the other hand, is a beautiful goddess, and she smells like clean laundry and sweat in the good way. When Matthew introduced me to Paige, I became instantly infatuated with her. My idiot brother kept talking over her and generally not appreciating her as much as I would have. After the meal, my parents insisted we play charades. I excused myself to use the washroom. Now, Matthew lives in a very cheap apartment. One of those where there's only one subpar bathroom and it's connected to their bedroom. While I was on my way to use a toilet, I noticed a laundry ham lid, uh, did this guy mean a hamper or what? Near the bed. Right on top was Paige's lacy red thong. It smelled like her. I couldn't help but take a whiff and stuff it in my pocket before returning to the living room. Now I'm at home, and having this memento has made me immensely happy. I know it's not the proper gentlemanly thing to do, but it was right there as if she wanted me to see it. I don't know exactly why I'm writing this, I suppose I have a bit of guilt, but I think what I did was harmless and justified. And I admit, it feels nice to spite my brother, XD. What the hell, dude? And you said you bought used panties, but you didn't. You stole them. And yeah, the title was right. I'm gonna end it right here because I need a shower. Anyway, I'd like to thank all of my patrons, especially Benjamin Spoonie the Rogue, Seth Southwell, Kathy Loves Cats, Catalan Cormandy, Henrik, GF Mickelson, Bacon Cat, and our newest member of the royalty, Misty Lewis. You can join in the link below and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like. If you have something interesting to say, don't forget to comment. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification bell. See you guys next time.